Let's take a few moments and look at the materials in your Math Mastery Starter Collection. At the bottom, you will find your top tray. This tray has nine each of the unit bars, one through nine. It also has 10 of the 10 bars and 100 square. And I'm showing it to you first because we always start working with the manipulatives first. You will find smiley face books. These can be easily identified by the smiley face on the front. There are five different areas for smiley face. Counting, which is your place value, addition in brown, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You have the first four books in this series. You also have 10 each of addition facts mastery and multiplication facts mastery. The books and the software can be used concurrently. There are 10 level one algebra books. Now you may think that's strange, but even young children enjoy starting out with algebra. To help you working in these books, we have the video as well as our Series A manuals. There are six included in your kit. There's games and activities, a good one to start with, then addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, which will give you ideas as you work in the smiley face books, and one on algebraic operations. In addition, you have the Level 1 Teacher's Manual, which is coded to our Level 1 books. Now you have the algebra for Level 1, and so you will be working in that strand in this manual, and you can look ahead and see what will be coming up in the other expansion kits. And obviously, you've already found your Getting Started video. Before we start working with the manipulatives, I want to discuss a few basic ideas that are underlying principles for Morton's math. I want you to take a moment and think about thinking. What does that involve? It involves imagining. It involves visualizing. Take some time and look up the definition of thinking. One definition I found was visualizing possibilities visualizing, imagining. What do we need to be able to do that? We need experience and we need to have seen things, right? Once in math is so visual and it provides children with lots of experiences in math. Another important thing to think about is how do children learn language? Well, they're born they come into the world and people are talking all around them. They are in a language-rich environment. They hear words, they try to say those words. And if they don't say it right, what do we do as adults do? We say it correctly for them. And how do they learn to speak in sentences? Do we teach them grammar before they're five years old? No. What we do is we just talk normally and they pick up sentence structure. Before they know what a noun or a verb is, they're using them. Why? How do they do that? All children around the world are born with a natural problem-solving ability. And it's with this problem-solving ability that they pick up patterns in languages. Whether it's English or Spanish or French or Japanese, they pick up those patterns. And that's why it makes it so easy for children to learn languages at an early age. They hear things and then they have a sense of what is right, what sounds right. But they have that natural ability to discover those patterns from being in a language-rich environment. We want mathematics to be the same way. We want to give them the tools and to make it intellectually exciting for them so that they can discover the beauty and the patterns of mathematics. Now you have all these materials in front of you. Let's talk about how you're going to start with children of different ages. 
with four to seven year olds, you will probably start them out working in the smiley face books, then doing some problems in algebra and addition facts mastery, and saving the multiplication facts mastery until later. With eight to 10 year olds, you have a choice. You can start them in algebra or smiley face or addition or multiplication facts mastery because they've already been exposed to a lot of mathematics. The children 11 years old and up, you may want to start them out in the algebra or multiplication facts mastery. Then go back and work with a smiley face because algebra is just generalized arithmetic. And once they've gotten this boost by working in algebra and they've done a few books, then it's going to be fun for them to see the specific case of how they can use these same materials to make arithmetic fun. We are going to assume in this video that children already know how to count. How many? One. How many do I have in my hand this time? One again. And this time, it's also one. Now, pick up this bar. How many do you have in your hand? It's one. And here, if a young child is looking at this from a distance, what are they automatically going to say? One. And they may not even be looking at it from a distance. But they're all one. There is something different. They're different kinds. And they have different names. Just as this has a name that's different from this. Well, let's name these. This is a unit. This is a 10. This is a 100. Now, we have just started what we call the three period lesson. The first part, this is, is where we identify it for the child. You know, you've done the three period lesson before. When you taught your children parts of the body, certainly you identified it for them first. And what was the next thing that you did? The next thing was you had them point to the parts of the body, right? That's our show me phase. So we would say, with these in front of the child, hold up a 10. Point two, a unit. Hold 100 by your ear. You see, there are all sorts of crazy fun things that we can do that make the three period lesson a little more interesting and exciting. But you know, when children are first learning things, it's exciting in itself. In a written format, this is, is where we have a picture and a label. The show me is where they might match an item to a name or pick it out, a multiple choice type setting. The smiley face books are really done in a show me format. And the last part is what is this? This is where the child has heard the name in the this is and the show me parts of the lesson. Now the child has had an opportunity to internalize that and now the child is asked to give the name. What is this? Hundred. What is this? Unit. What is this? Ten. If the child has any trouble at any part, what are you going to do? You just go back to the part before it. So if when you said, show me 10, the child pointed to this, you would say, this is a unit, this is 10, this is 100. Real simple, very easy. The same thing that they've been used to you're doing when they're learning. They're not dumb because they couldn't do that. They just hadn't had enough chance to hear those words and have them become familiar to them.
I want you to get out some materials just as I have. And if you don't have those materials in front of you, you need to pause the camera and go get them. Remember, math is not a spectator sport, and you're going to learn far more by working with a manipulatist yourself. In the video, I'm going to model some ways that you might be working with children, as well as teaching you some ideas for working with children and important verbalizations. And also teach you to work with them, because if you, like I, went to school and had not worked with manipulatives, this is different for you. And you need the experience as well. With the materials in front of you, pick up two. Some of you may have picked up these. Some other people may have picked up these, or you might imagine that a child might pick up these. Well, how can I get you to pick up what I want? You need to know what kind, right? Pick up two of the units kind. Very easy now. Pick up two of the tens kind. Right here. Pick up one of the hundreds kind. Here. Three of the tens kind. Here. And you see some ways that you can start working with older children in doing this type of problems. Now, let's clear this off and focus on these. You're working with a very young child at this point. Now, we're assuming that the child can count from one to nine. We need to make sure that the child is good at identifying this is one, this is two, this is three. You can do all sorts of things with that. You might have a pile of these in one place in your home or in your classroom and ask the child to go get one or two or three units or five units or eight units, just checking. They're gonna have a good time doing that and showing you. You can do little fast races to see how fast they can gather those up and that type of thing as well. Now. They've done that. Suppose you're working with a young child who does not yet know their numerals. We're going to do exactly the same thing in identifying the numerals that we did in identifying our unit 10 and 100. We need to do a three-peer lesson. I'm going to model this with just three cards, but of course you would start out with more than that. This is a one, this is a two, this is a three. Hold up two. Point to three. Point to one. You see, the child has heard those words. They're very familiar. Now, they're learning those symbols. The next thing you may want to do is match those with the bars. So, can you show me one bar? Can you show me two units? Three units, and the child is doing that. Another fun thing to do is to show them the card or hand them the card, let them go get those blocks, bring them to you. After doing that a few times where they took the card with them, then just show them the card and let them go get it. This develops their visual memory. Before, when we told them it helped develop their auditory memory, Showing it to them, then letting them go get it, develops their visual memory. 